So coming from LA to Mexico City, it's sort of like going from like two cities in the same country. A lot of like these old white Republicans, when they talk about illegal immigration, for them it's just racism. You know, like it's just simple, straight up racism. It's kind of like when white Republicans complain about President Obama, like they're not complaining about his politics, they're just racist. The thing that's actually happening is that as the United States becomes more and more Latino, it, it's, it's almost like Mexico's winning. You know, like, I mean, American culture is becoming so Latino. And at some point, the United States will become predominantly a Latino country. That's a better victory, I think. That's why every time I come to Mexico, I feel like it's my job as a citizen of the United States to apologize for my country. Mm. You know, and but fully understanding that, like, things are getting better. You know, there's things that get worse, like trying to keep building a stupid wall. But generally, I think things are getting better. Shifting from politics. I saw your shoes. Do you like hiking or mountaineering? Oh, or? Here's... Okay, well I grew up playing in punk rock bands and in the punk rock world we always wore boots because everyone was slam dancing and so you would wear boots to keep your feet from getting crushed. And so it's sort of just a habit and, and sometimes when I go on tour like if I'm playing shows I jump around a lot and if I wear boots they give me more ankle support. I know that's not a very exciting answer. Do you have any other side hobby on hiking, like bird watching or...? As strange as this might sound, my two hobbies would be yoga and kickboxing. I mean, lots of other little hobbies. Like, I love neuroscience. It's my, so I'm like an amateur scientist. The, the best way to have energy is to love what you're doing. Um, I mean, like, cause I love coffee, I love tea. Nothing wakes me up more than, like, playing music or doing something that I love. Um, Oliver Sacks wrote another book, I think, called Musicophilia. And I work with Dr. Sacks. He started a music therapy program called the Institute for Music and Neurologic Function. And what that, that book shows is that music is such a powerful healing modality. People who had dementia, who are aphasic, who've had strokes, can actually, their brains can be rewired through music. In the 19th century, there was this science of phrenology where they said that you know different parts of the brain, like this is your criminal part of your brain, this is the religious part of your brain, they were sort of right, meaning there is a speech center, there is a visual center, and if you have a stroke and those centers are denied blood, they die off. But music affects the entire brain, so people who can't speak can still sing. And through singing, through verbalizing, they can actually rebuild their power of speech. It's miraculous. Like I've seen footage of like an old person in a wheelchair and they can't walk. You put on their favorite song from when they were 15 and suddenly they're able to get up and move around. You turn the song off and they fall back in their wheelchair. Unfortunately, no one can make money from it. So there isn't a lot of money put into music therapy. What I would ask to Brian Eno is if he started his own perfume company what would some of his perf what would his perfume scents be? If he couldn't use any synthetics, if he just had to use scents from the natural world, what scents would he want to combine? What I love about ambient music is, and in, in a way it's similar to architecture in that it affects a space. Everything affects our perception. And music, it's just amazing that somehow this thing that doesn't exist, because music is just air moving a little differently. You know, like, if you walk by a construction site or you walk by a symphony, they're kind of doing the same thing. They're just, they're moving air a little bit differently, and they both affect us so emotionally. What comes first, technology or uh, the ideas? I can admit this, I'm very gadgety, but I'm ignorant and gadgety. Like, some people, love their gadgets and love figuring out how the gadgets work. With technology, I just wanted to do things and to work, and I don't really care how it works. With music software, I don't want to like understand it, I just want to be able to use it. And then that idea of like technology versus the idea which comes first, to me, it's an, it's an impossible question to answer, because sometimes the idea comes first, sometimes the technology comes first, but most times, they interact with each other constantly. In, a, in many practical ways, I don't think you can have one without the other. 
you would be the one for curating a, a TED talk or a TED beer, which ones would you invite? Thich Nhat Hanh. Thich Nhat Hanh was a Vietnamese monk, and I think his writings are really beautiful. There has never, as far as we know, there's never been a species even remotely like humans on this planet. Like every other species adapts to the natural world, and humans have created a completely other world. And as we've, and what's amazing is we've created this completely other world that is looking at things that are profoundly impractical. The Higgs boson, the Large Hadron Collider, like there might be a practical application, but it's just fantastically impractical because we're so curious. And I feel like as a species, what we all need to do is take a minute and just appreciate ourselves. And I, I actually appreciate what we've done. Because you know, we use all this technology without really taking a moment to accept how miraculous it is. That's why I'm interested in like neuroscience and like especially where neuroscience and spirituality overlay, everything's in our brain. You know, all perception, everything happens in our brain. And I think as a species, the next step is to better understand our brain, just more self-awareness. Um, that's why my first guest would be Thich Nhat Hanh. And then I would ha see if Led Zeppelin would come and perform. Or what I think would be interesting is to get people to do things that they don't normally do, like to get um, Brian Eno to prepare food for everyone. Scrambled eggs. Yeah. David Lynch would be the DJ. The Dalai Lama would make some short films. Barack Obama would come and talk about Franz Fanon, a revolutionary in the mid-20th century, like a true revolutionary, and he's one of Barack Obama's heroes. That's so cool that the President of the United States has a hero in Franz Fanon. Like, he'll never talk about it, because Franz Fanon was a, like a Che Guevara-style revolutionary. I'm being completely honest. It's such an honor to be here. Like, when I looked at the lineup of the other people who were involved, I. I sort of felt like that scene from Wayne's World, when Wayne meets Alice Cooper and he says, we're not worthy, we're not worthy. Like, it seems wrong for me to be here because I look at like Brian Eno and Steve Wozniak and these iconic, very smart, legendary people. And it just amazes me that somehow I was even considered to be a part of a festival that they're a part of. So it's, I love, I love Mexico, I love Me Mexico City. So far this festival is wonderful, so thank you very much for having me. Hola, soy Moby, estás escuchando Ibero 90.9.